from obese dragonflies to depressed gorillas when it comes to humankind's most puzzling diseases. It may surprise you to discover that we're not the only ones in the animal kingdom who are suffering. And ABC's David Wright met one doctor who's breaking down the species barrier. In the era of high-tech medicine, a transesophageal echocardiogram is a fairly routine procedure for UCLA cardiologist Barbara Natterson Horowitz, but for this patient, not so much. Jake is a 13-year-old chimp getting a preventative checkup common for humans. In Jake's case, a house call at the Los Angeles Zoo. Natterson Horowitz has been moonlighting at the zoo for six years, a sort of modern-day Dr. Doolittle. When this started, I was skeptical, honestly. I wasn't like, oh, animals and humans were all the same. She's been surprised to learn how much human and veterinary medicine have in common. Animals suffer from almost all the same diseases that human beings do, but veterinarians and physicians never talk about this. You sort of confess that uh, doctors look down on vets a little bit. Physicians have not typically, traditionally, seen veterinarians as their clinical peers, and that's unfortunate. Veterinarians may be the ultimate general <laughs> practitioners, dealing with a variety of species and patients who can't tell the doctor where it hurts. Like Cookie, a lioness diagnosed with fluid in the sac around her heart, a potentially fatal condition. They were making this diagnosis through careful observation, looking at body position, eating patterns, and they were right. UCLA would have run a lot of tests. Yes. In addition to talking about We would diagnosis. have done wonderful tests. We would have made a diagnosis quickly. I don't think even my most esteemed colleagues could have made with inspection alone. She started seeing her human patients differently. Every single time I saw a disease in a human patient, I asked the question. And I'm batting a thousand, pretty much. And one of the questions is, I saw a patient with chlamydia. So I said, do animals get STDs? And of course they get STDs. Animals don't practice safe sex. No condoms for koalas. Apparently not. Biologists in Australia are trying to develop a koala chlamydia vaccine. Is there a human vaccine for chlamydia? No. Her work is now the focus of a new book she co-authored with science writer Catherine Bowers, calling for zubiquity, an approach to medicine that crosses the species barrier. And it's helped me see myself not as just a human being, but as connected to all the other animals on the planet. The LA Zoo's chief veterinarian says the zoo has come to rely on human specialists. Do you guys have to pay the going rate or do you have insurance? <laughs> no, we're very fortunate. Doctors are willing to come out to the zoo because it's cool. It's called a great referral. That's what it is. <laughs> so when Rhonda the rhino was diagnosed with squamous cell carcinoma on her horn, and squamous cell carcinoma is cancer, basically. And it's a very common cancer in humans. She got a free house call from one of UCLA's top oncologists, plus free rhinoplasty. And she's so appreciative of it. Look at that. Now Rhonda is cancer-free. Oh, that's there. awesome. But acknowledging the similarities between animals and humans does have bigger implications. For instance, what does ubiquity mean when it comes to animal testing? a controversial issue. Maybe it's an argument for it because, hey, these guys have the exact same disease. Or maybe it's an argument against it because we should show more compassion. They're more like us than we think. Yeah, animal testing is a really important and complicated issue. And there's no question that that debate needs to continue. I'm asking for your opinion. I really can't give a simple answer because it's a very complicated, nuanced question. Should the Hippocratic Oath apply to hippos? Dr. Natterson Horowitz refuses to say. I'm David Wright for Nightline at the Los Angeles Zoo. Zubiquity is in stores now.